Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, the first thing I am now aware of uh, for my presentation is you're supposed to have your coffee break uh, two minutes ago. Uh, but uh, again, uh, I think uh, I have an uh, interesting story on innovation and collaboration uh, in one of the very important global industry uh, in the past two years that uh, Shinali Electric has been uh, fortunately to be part of, a sm playing a small part behind this global initiatives. Uh, so I hope that you don't mind. I take up a few minutes away from your coffee break and let me share with you uh, this afternoon. So my, top, my title of the presentation is about innovation. And uh, to echo back to the uh, symposium title today of Frank Chamber, um, to us at Schneider and to the uh, main characters of this innovation story I'm about to unfold to you today, uh, innovation means both revolution and evolution. Okay? So... Uh, I'm very excited to share this story with you uh, because I've been uh, with a team in, in this story uh, for, for the past two years. So um, it's not about us, again, this presentation, although I'm from, from Shinai Electric's. For those of you who are not familiar with us, uh, Shinai Electric brand's name has a German-sounding name, but we're basically a French company, and we are now basically also a global company with uh, eco-footprinting across the world in different region. And uh, our distinguished panelists, uh, the uh, speakers uh, today at the symposium have uh, shared the insights with you on all those challenges and opportunities uh, about the retail and uh, particularly the retail and, and, and uh, textile value chain. So I do not also want to repeat those insights again. Uh, but before I really go deep into this uh, innovation story, I just want to uh, make sure that, uh, first, I'm not an expert in apparel industry, okay? So all this journey that uh, our team has been uh, uh, collaborating with the apparel leaders across the world and also in Hong Kong, and I can see some of these leaders also in this room this afternoon, um, it's about learning, co-learning, collaboration uh, for innovation. So these are some of the apparel uh, segments, uh, uh, partners that the Shinai Trick has been supporting with. If I, if I may uh, be allowed to share uh, uh, quickly on the, the main drivers, one, some of the main drivers why the global apparel industry want to go into this uh, innovation uh, journey, which we call Hick Index, um, by the Sustainable Power Coalition, which is US-based, but basically is a global member-based member uh, organization that uh, drives the whole uh, industry to work more environmentally, socially, and sustainably uh, responsible uh, businesses. Basically, it co all comes from the bottom line. What are we, or what are the industries doing today? So. Uh, quickly, uh, for, for example, apparel uh, product, the economy globally has been uh, ups and downs, but basically you can see the trend of, uh, in terms of global apparel, footwear, and home textiles productions have been growing. Because the market's growing, the demand is, especially in the new economies, are also uh, uh, on, on the rise. If you look at some of the research that the SAC members or the, or, or, or the, uh, the academic stakeholders have been doing in terms of the environmental impacts of this growing uh, industry, growing apparel trade, for example, we can see more than 70 billion pieces of apparel uh, were produced per year in the past few years or decade. But if you look, uh, take the lens at the product level, okay, so some of the uh, SAC members, so some of the players have been doing some very interesting pilot projects on understanding on a product-based level what will be the impact in terms of how much electricity uh, was consumed, uh, uh, how much waste will be produced, how much CO2 emission will be uh, emitted from producing one piece of a garment apparel. You can see basically um, the, there's some interesting figures over there. 
And when we talk about data, talk about figures, talk about how we can use the data to make uh, actions, to, to make um, um, interesting collaboration for, for the better goods of the society, the business, and the environment, um, we also see basically the trend of the data analytics, big data have been moving from the past, which basically focusing on I want to get my data in one place, I want to have a, as many data as possible, to now why you want to have that data or that much of data. So what, what is the implication? What is the business uh, impact of doing this uh, move? Okay, so let me share with you a, a quick example. After two years of deploying this hate index uh, 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 web-based uh, uh, tool that I will share with you in a minute, um, if you think, for example, um, usually brands or um, different companies will be interested to send their auditors to the factories in different parts of the world to basically understand uh, their operation, understand their environmental impacts, etc. Let's imagine um, these auditors or these brands want to ask the question, okay, so uh, I want to know what if I got the right data to let me understand what will be the next uh, hot spots across my supply chain in terms of water shortage in the next five years. What should we as a brand or as a facility uh, or a parallel a player should do? So it's not now increasing, not so much about I need more data, but I need the right data, okay? And the next very important point to share is we always talk about big data, but in the sustainability area, we also want to talk about broad data, which means basically not only we focus on energy, water, resource consumption, but also on, for example, the labor conditions, the social condition where uh, the factory workers, especially the women workers, uh, have been experiencing in each of the uh, countries that my supply chain has a, a footprint across. And again, we want to have uh, this technology, this collaboration enable for uh, people who are to, now, when we're sitting in this room for this symposium, we want to enable the SEC partners, uh, the brands, the auditors, the collaborators to be able to use the technology anywhere, anytime, um, on the different uh, technology devices. So this is basically setting the background about, about this Hick Index project. Okay, so quickly, um, I can see a lot of uh, SAC members already in the room, so um, just give you a very quick um, uh, background. SAC, as I said, is a member-based global parallel trade organization that drives innovations. And Hick Index, the first version of a Hick Index, uh, which is basically a self-assessment tool, uh, to be used voluntarily uh, among the SAC members and factories uh, globally uh, was first released in 2012. So we're talking about something like uh, three years ago, okay? Some three, four years ago. Uh, in December 2013, SAC decide, members decided to move the stage onward and to release the next version of the Hick Index. So basically, Hick Index is, uh, if I can put it in a nutshell, is... Uh, set of self-assessment questionnaires, or we call them modules, that uh, the facilities will be filling in on the environmental, social, and operational um, uh, situation every year. Okay? And in the past, they're using Excel or other manual process of gathering the information. So when the SEC want, wanted to uh, move this index journey forward for innovation, they want to make sure that this new project or the technology is going to be uh, uh, deployed will achieve at least four things that they think can move the whole uh, industry forward. First, uh, as I said, they want to manage and get the data to manage the value chain footprints 24-7 globally. But uh, also equally important is they want to benchmark the performance of the facilities uh, in different new or old economies. So the performance benchmarking is, is of course, a very key 
component of the Hick Index uh, project. But I would say this, the coming third and the fourth points are, are what basically driving SAC and the Hick Index journey in the past uh, two, two, three, two, two, three years. Imagine SAC members, mostly the brands, who are working together, but also at the same time they compete in the marketplace together, right? So, so when the brands or the SAC council decided to sit down and say, "Hey, basically," uh, and and for bit, for bit me, I cannot uh, mention the the individual brand name, but uh, basically, I'm just saying collectively, these industry peers decided. Okay, we want to share best practice. And in order to share best practice, we have to lower the barriers in terms of increasing the transparency on the data, on the practice. So if you are interested and go to the SAC website to, to look at the Hack Index questionnaires, actually, they basically uh, develop out from the insights or the uh, ongoing best practice of different brands like Nike or Puma or the other, uh, other brands uh, in the SAC community. So greater transparency. Last but not least, then the users who use this uh, new Hick Index uh, uh, technology can basically share best practices with more, with more transparency, with uh, benchmarking and, and more uh, Functionalities, and we'll show you some interesting data uh, on. Um, so after s something like a year of deployment after last year, so what 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 was what is it like in terms of uh, uh, how many users are already adopting the Hick Index uh, platform and already making in meaningful connections? So this basically, uh, as I just mentioned, uh, Hick Index moving from Excel to uh, Smart uh, Era. Again, uh, this project also have uh, some very challenging uh, uh, KPIs, so to speak, um, uh, since its uh, establishment. First, they want to have SEC wants to uh, engage more than 80% of their brands and facilities over the next two years in using this technology, getting meaningful data into the system, and and driving uh, more innovation. Uh, sub, 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 uh, in a transparent and scalable manner. Um, because of time, I cannot show you a demo on, on the platform. I'm happy to show you on my smartphone doing coffee break later on if you, for those of you who are interested. But basically, it is, it is, it is a browser-like platform, okay? And with benchmarking uh, features, I'm going very fast now uh, with the caffeine level going down, uh, at least on my own. But uh, interestingly, it's about uh, benchmarking not only against the whole SAC peers. So the point is the Hick Index platform is like a Facebook, if, if I may. The brands and the facilities can connect with each other online in a, in a reciprocal way, like other social media. Once they are connected, they can look at the performance scores or data or or how your factories have been actually performing in last year uh, from the Hick Index uh, data sets. But we can also go a little bit more granular to the individual facility level to look at how your or your partner's facilities have been performing. Now, try to, try to, think, try to get rid of all, all this technology speaks, all this uh, uh, big data stuff, and just think about how many trust these SEC members and the factories have to build before they can actually share the information here online. All right? And I've been, uh, before, before moving into this uh, technology role, uh, previously I was also uh, uh, an auditor working at different factories. So I, I, I know all these uh, stories about having one book here and another book uh, under the shelf when the auditors arrive to the factories, blah, 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 or whether it's true or not, okay? There's a lot of skepticism, a lot of um, questions when SEC decided to move uh, forward this uh, Index 2.0 project two years ago. But I'm happily reporting that Say, for example, uh, at the SAC member conference at Portland uh, last autumn, uh, we can see a lot of uh, qu 
a lot of these questions and challenges or, or skepticism, basically uh, not all of them, but mostly removed uh, with the users who actually use the uh, technology. And I think this is uh, some of the other slides uh, showing the different uh, uh, screenshot of the Hague Index uh, um, to itself. So I'm coming to the end of my talk uh, this afternoon quickly. So you may ask, how is Hague Index innovative? Okay. So of course, it's always about the technology. And after something like six to nine months deployment in 2014, we can see from this slide, uh, there are more than now uh, 2,000 users of brands, facility, uh, and uh, not only brands and facility, but also NGOs, uh, environmental groups, university researchers uh, studying and helping the industry to, to innovate, and the like. Um, more than, and you can see more and more data, uh, real data, not real-time data. Okay, there's, there's two different concepts. Real data coming on board, I, but I would say, in terms of innovativeness of this Hague Index journey, I think the blue color box is very interesting. Okay, so for example, at the back end, basically uh, our team can observe how the connection between the Hague Index users have been growing. So, uh, very, so now you can see something close to 4,000 um, connections like the Facebook kind of uh, uh, establishment built, but it's, only, it's, it's already outdated num uh, figures. It's the December 2014 figures. So now we are in March. Uh, uh, always, always need the uh, uh, end of first quarter 2015. We are seeing some very interesting exponential kind of growth in terms of connection. And some of the interesting side projects that some of the SAC brands and the facilities have been, been engaged because they can share the best practice. Uh, I have the last 10 seconds, right, I know? Yeah, the last 10 seconds. Okay. So um, I, think, I, I believe that Frank Chengbei will share my PowerPoint with you, so, um, uh, which I'm happy to uh, uh, share more with you. I will jump quickly to my last two slides. We'll see again, if, we ask the, if I need to answer the question of how Hate Index 2.0 journey is innovative, uh, I, I would mention two things. First, we are seeing a truly global network of collaboration is taking shape. It's going to, to take a lot of time. It's going to be not as fast as uh, some, of the, uh, uh, some of us would wish to, but in fact, in the past year of deployment of the uh, project, we can see more brands and retailers, as I just mentioned, they are making connections, okay? Instead of uh, having the check of uh, whether your factory in uh, Guangzhou has filled in the Hague Index questionnaires for environmental uh, last, for last year, uh, every year, basically, I can, we can see the brands and facility doing some interesting talks quarterly and monthly. And the facilities also benefit from uh, sharing best practice with, by uh, adding connection as well as for other uh, interested parties in this SAC community. Mm -hmm. So this is my last slide, almost there. Um, coffee is being served. Um, again, back to my title on sustainable innovation. Of course, it's about technology. But like some of these pictures taken at the SAC member conference at Portland last uh, uh, autumn, it's about the commitment by the talented, dedicated women and men of this global apparel industry to drive innovations, even though they, which that means they have to sit with the competitors, sit with the different uh, stakeholders for open, honest dialogue. And it is happening right now in Hong Kong and onward. So thank you very much for the time, uh, and thank you for the French Chamber for inviting Schneider Electric again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Alex Chan. Um, Alex, yes? if there are companies out here today and they're interested, can they just give you a call, come to see you over, over, over a coffee? Uh, absolutely. And, uh, I, and thank you, for, uh, uh, Anson, for mentioning this. 
uh, which I forgot to mention during my presentation. Uh, That's why I'm here, Alex. That's exactly, why I'm here. exactly. Perfect. It's spot on. Um, for the SEC members, of course, they, because the, they are the members, so they have the privilege of using this technology. Right. But for example, for the, all the members' facilities worldwide, including in China, they, are f they can use it free of charge. Free of charge. Okay. And SEC tasks us at Schneider Electric and other of the uh, partners uh, uh, in Hong Kong, like the Clothing Indust uh, Training Industry uh, Authority, right. CITER, uh, to basically uh, help these facilities to use this platform. We give them training, and then we take care of the rest. Okay. Free of charge. So, of charge. so basically, this is about we want to, together with SAC and the community, want to push the adoption rate faster and faster to whether 80% uh, of the total community in the next two years. Okay. Okay. Excellent. Thank Ladies you. Ladies and gentlemen, Alex Chan. Thank you very much, thank you. Alex.